Hi, I'm Andrew Harvey, and this is the fourth video in the series of creating and drawing tags in VT SCADA version 11 and 11.1. .1. Now, in the first three videos, we saw the process of creating the tags, organizing them into a context for a motor, and then using a little bit of programming magic to make it easy to create all the remaining motors in the series. In this video, it's time we turned our attention to drawing those tags for the operator interface. So we're going to begin by opening the Idea Studio. At this point in the process, the tags have been created for all four motors, and it's easy to see those by choosing the driver level in the tag browser and clicking the Show Children button. Now I can see all of the child tags from this level down, and I can see their addresses and values at a glance. But what we want to do now is to draw these tags. So I'm going to close the tag browser and open the Idea Studio, which I can find at the top of the screen. Now, this starts out with some introductory information for people who are brand new to VT SCADA. Once you've read what's here on the overview page once, the best thing to do is to go to the Select menu, click Select All, and then Cut to clean everything off the screen and start with a clean page. I'm going to begin by drawing something to represent the status of a motor. I'm going to start with Motor 1. So I'm going to begin by going into my Equipment Widgets. Now be very careful at this point. In the palette, I have widgets selected. I could go to images, and there I would see that I do in fact have images of motors. But these are images only. They're static. They will never be linked to a tag, and they will never be animated to be able to show whether the motor is running or not. They're simply a picture of a motor. So in order to come up with something that's going to be animated on the screen so the operator can actually see the status of the motor, I'm very, very careful to make certain that my selection is with the widgets palette. Now I'm going to be able to go down to my equipment images, or widgets, and from there I can find that I've got a group of motors. I'll take one of these motors, drag it onto the screen, and if I wanted to, I could grab one of these grips to resize it, make it larger, smaller, as required. At this point, you notice that it's blinking green and gray. That's because it's animated to show that it, it is in fact a widget, not an image, but it's not yet linked to any tag. The next thing I recommend is go to the Home uh, toolbar and find the Unlinked Indicators button here. From this ribbon, what I'm going to be able to do is choose the Unlinked Indicators and now I've got a warning symbol showing blinking on and off on this widget, and that lets me know which widgets have been linked to tags and which ones still are simply animated with a, a simulator. Okay, having done that, we know that we do need to link that to a tag. So I can right-click on the widget, or I can go back to its Format ribbon, and there, with the widget selected, click the Link button. Within Motor 1, I'm going to find my Status tag, and I will do a Select. It now turns gray, and it stays gray because the motor is off, while everything else that I see in the palette continues to blink. Now, there's another way of approaching this whole process of choosing which uh, widgets to draw, because one thing about the widgets palette is I have an enormous wealth of choices, not all of which are appropriate for every possible tag that I have. Another way that I could work is without the Idea Studio open, I could have the Tag Browser open, I could find the tag that I want to draw, choose it, let's say we want to draw the Control Tag, and click Draw. That opens the Idea Studio, and it opens up an independent palette window, which has been filtered for only those widgets that can be used for the selected tag. That will save you a certain amount of hunting around trying to find appropriate widgets to use. Now, continuing on, I'm going to open up my buttons and switches because I'm drawing a, a control tag. 
And of all of these different possible buttons and more in a subfolder, I think what I will use is the push button. We'll drag that up and place it beside the motor, close the tag browser, and let's make that just a little bit smaller by shrinking it to a, a smaller horizontal bar. I'm going to do this again, draw a second one, because I want, I'm going to need to have an on and an off button. So going back into my buttons and switches, this time since I came directly into the palette, it's not been filtered, and I see all of the switches that would work with a selector switch, but not necessarily with a digital control that I'm using. We'll grab the push button again, drag this up beside the first one, and oh, it's the wrong size. So I'm going to do a control click, choose the first, there's a heavy blue bar to indicate which is the anchor object or the most recently selected object. And I'm going to do a match size to make the new one match the same size as the first one. Now the first one has been linked to a control tag. The second one has not. So let's go into its properties and I can see that yes, it is currently linked to motor control but I need to tell it what to write when the operator clicks. So I'm going to go into the Properties dialog and tell it that this will be the On button, so I want to write a 1 to turn the motor on. I'm going to disable the Confirmation dialog and then move in this to the side a bit. Let's make these a bit different so I can tell which one is on and which one is off. I'll go into my Color Choices and make this a shade of green indicate that I'm going to have an on button. Now doing the same for the second widget, we'll right click, link, and link that to the same motor control, and then go to its properties, tell it to write a zero when the operator clicks. Again, I'm not going to bother with the confirmation, and I'll make this red for stop. Finally, all I need is some sort of an indicator for my alarm state. So going back to the home level of the palette, I can see that I have a number of indicators. I'm going to choose the backlit square. I'll place it close to the motor, and we'll shrink that down so I can place it just on top of the motor. And I'll link that to my fault monitor. And finally, well, no, finally nothing. I'm done. This has now been set so that I've got something that shows me the motor status, on and off buttons, and a fault indicator when I'm in an, an alarm state. Let's close the Idea Studio and see how it's working so far. We'll open the overview page, and if I click the Start button, ah, the motor turns green as it should because the PLC has in fact turned the motor on. If I click my stop button, it switches off. And if I push this into an alarm state by clicking the, the fault button, I see that I now have a blinking red indicator to indicate that a fault has occurred on this motor. Now, there's a certain amount of magic going on here in that all of the widgets I've chosen use the style settings tag, which is a new feature in version 11. For example, what if having gone to all of this work, my customer who I'm building this application for tells me that green shouldn't mean on for a motor, green should mean off. <laughs> or um, perhaps gray is fine for off, but perhaps a live motor should be red to indicate that it's in a danger state. Well, thanks to the status tag, I can go into my tag setup, find my style setting in its properties, under the basic settings, for the on state, which is currently green, I can change this to be red, and now my equipment, when I turn the motor on, it will show a red state instead of green, and every tag that's using that same style setting will do exactly the same. Now, of course, these two, I set colors directly, so they don't follow along. 
Anyway, in my next video, I'll show you how to automate the process that we're going to need to use in order to use this same uh, set of drawings indicators for all the remaining motors in the system.